You've probably seen art pieces at museums or online created by an artist named P.A. Mondrian. His collection and style became iconic and defines a period of time in art. Today, we're designing and making a Mondrian art-inspired candle box. To design this project, I use a program called Rhinoceros and start by drawing a 6-inch square which will be the overall shape and size of the candle box. Using a different color layer, I draw a line vertically and move it so it passes over both sides of the square. With the copy command, I duplicate the line and vary the spacing between each one to get variation in the pattern that we're developing. Then, I mirror one reference line at an angle to get a horizontal copy. I copy the line down and follow the same logic as coming up with the spacing for the vertical lines. With the rough pattern designed, I lock the reference line layer, switch back to the red layer, and use the reference lines to figure out the final pattern by drawing red lines and creating a series of polygons that emulate the style of Mondrian paintings. Then, I use the offset command to bring the perimeter in by an eighth of an inch and offset all the interior lines by a sixteenth of an inch. This will be the frame that helps us align all the acrylic pieces. Now, I draw a 1 inch by 8 inch deep tab and copy it along the bottom. These will be pushed into slots at the bottom panel of the candle box. This next step is important for any design project. I copy over the entire design in case I need to go back to it. I also copy it down so I could start the next part of the design. Using the offset command and switching to a new layer, I offset each of the rectangles for the pattern inwards by 1 32nd of an inch. This will be the outer frame of the project and the idea is to have a smaller frame on the interior wall that will help align and hold acrylic with different colors. This will make more sense in the 3D modeling part of this video. With the offsets complete and the new rectangle switched to different layers, I move on to designing the remainder of the tabs on the sides of the exterior panels. These will help us align and construct the candle box. I also added tabs at the top of the side panels which will go into tabs of the roof to add rigidity to the candle box. Now we just need to design the bottom and top panels. 
This part is simple and all we need to do is draw a rectangle that's larger than the width of the finger joints and figure out where the tabs need to go based on the width of the walls. They're going in roughly the same locations on all four sides of the bottom and top panels of the candle box, so after I figure out their location on one side, I mirror it around the others. We'll need to adjust their locations later when we refine the design, but this is what the process looks like. Before we construct the 3D model, I thought about the design of the inner panel that'll help us align the acrylic pieces and hold them in place. I decided to trim off the perimeter and only have the interior frame so we can avoid a tight fit where two side panels are coming together. Now we just need to extrude all the components to an eighth of an inch and move each one into place. I start by aligning the interior panel and acrylic pieces with the exterior panel so that they're together in one assembly. Using the rotate command, I go into a side view and rotate the side panels so that they're upright and begin moving them into place. Through this process, I realized that the top panel had slots in the wrong location, so I updated the design, extruded the panel again, and moved it into place. This is what the final design looks like as a 3D model. Each of the white panels will be different types and colors of acrylic. When the design was complete, I gathered my materials including 8th inch plywood, white, blue, black, and frosted acrylic, and remove the protective masking tape from the acrylic sheets. The protective film can lead to small flames from the laser, which can damage the laser cutter, so it's safer to remove it from the side facing the laser head. I'll cover the plywood with paper masking tape to protect it from the laser. I place the acrylic onto the crumb tray and start the process of cutting and engraving. For this project, we'll run the cut for the different colors of acrylic four times and save both the frames and cutouts from each one. It's important to have a roll of painter's tape nearby so we can use it to hold all the pieces together after the cutting process is complete. While I was setting up the layouts for laser cutting, I decided to cut the interior frames out of acrylic so we can reduce material waste and cut times. Originally, I planned to cut the interior frames out of 8th inch plywood, but it'll be hidden behind the exterior panels anyway. The purpose of the interior frames is only to help us align the acrylic pieces and glue them into place so they can be seen from the outside. Once the acrylic was cut, I switched over to cutting the exterior wood panels. These will be engraved to help us align the acrylic interior frame and glue them into place. The rectangular cutout pieces could be thrown away after the cut is complete, so there's no need to use painter's tape to hold everything together after they're cut. If you're interested in purchasing a Glowforge for yourself, I'll share a link in the description section of this video that'll save you up to $500 off of a Glowforge Pro. When the pieces were cut, I took them out of my Glowforge and placed them on my work table. I removed the paper masking tape from the wood and backside of the acrylic pieces. While doing this, I take my time organizing the cutout so we can swap out the different colors and get variations on each side of the candle box. 
Next, I apply Maxi Gear Super Glue to the interior panels, align them with the engraved lines on the wood, and glue them into place. I do this for all four side panels. Then, I carefully apply super glue to the acrylic frame and take the colored acrylic pieces one by one and push them into place. When the side panels are complete, I apply glue between all the tabs, align it with the adjacent panel, and push them into place. I do this until all four sides of the candle box are together. Then, I bring over the bottom panel, apply glue between all the slots, align the tabs at the bottom of the side panels, and push them into place. To finish up this project, I apply glue to the underside of the top panel between all the slots, align it with the tabs, and carefully push it into place. Now, this Mondrian art-inspired cano box is complete. If you want to stay true to the style of the art, you can use white, blue, yellow, and red acrylic for this project. If you enjoyed this video, check out this playlist of my other acrylic crafts and consider subscribing. I'll see you again next week.